Everyone hates a YouTube video that strings out a quick answer for 10 minutes or more, don't they? Well, we don't do that here. If you want to know why the Earth spins quick and dirty, it's because Earth is made of the debris left over from the birth of our Sun, which was spinning, causing all of its leftover debris to spin. If you want to know the quick and dirty science answer, which is also the answer to the obvious question that throws up about why the Sun was spinning, it's because of the conservation of angular momentum. There, we've defied every demand of the YouTube algorithm that can only be satisfied if you keep watching. But we care more about you than some stupid algorithm, which is why our view and subscriber counts are so low, and why you have the answer to your pub quiz question long before the end of this episode. But hopefully, you're the curious type, because we can explain that a bit better and satisfy the YouTube algorithm at the same time. Stupid algorithm. So this all comes from very tiny effects that happened 5 billion years ago, or even longer, when there was no Sun, there was no solar system, and no planet Earth. In our neighbourhood of the galaxy, there was just a vast cloud of gas and dust that gravity was beginning to coalesce. As the motes of dust and gas molecules condensed down, they began bumping into one another. And just on the balance of probability, there will be very few of them that hit each other slap bang in the middle. The overwhelming majority will hit each other side on, so they start to spin. Think of it like a sliced serve that imparts spin on a tennis ball, or a free kick around a wall of defenders in football. Hitting an object side on makes it spin if there are no other forces acting on it to prevent it. And in a gas cloud in space, there are no forces acting on it that would stop it from spinning or even continuing to spin indefinitely. A law that is also known to astronomers as the conservation of angular momentum. And as more and more gas molecules and dust grains hit one another, the more the whole nebula takes on a spin characteristic, either clockwise or anticlockwise, only determined by chance. And if there's enough material in this nebula condensing down towards their mutual centre of gravity, it will get so hot and dense that a brand new star will form. And it'll always be spinning in a uniform direction because the dust and gas it formed from was spinning. So the star itself will be formed spinning. And this is how all stars form. And our sun is just an ordinary yellow dwarf star like hundreds of stars you can see in the night sky tonight. And like 20 billion other stars in our galaxy that we need telescopes to see. But star creation is a messy process with lots of debris and detritus that isn't all gobbled up by the new star's immense gravity. Some of this debris gets blown far out from the new star by the violent explosion of its formation, and because the original nebula, and now the infant star and its debris, are all spinning in the same direction, rather than being pulled back into the star, the debris smears out into an orbiting disk around it. The disk's orbit in the same direction the star spins, and the dust and gas that makes up this debris is also spinning in the same direction. Where that debris ring is thick and dense, those spinning particles clump together to form rotating space rocks. Where there's enough space rocks close together, they clump together to form rotating asteroids. Where there are enough asteroids close together, they clump together to form rotating little protoplanets. And as protoplanets have quite significant gravity of their own, if there's enough debris in their orbit, they will vacuum it up, clearing out their orbit by absorbing it and becoming a fully-fledged rotating planet in the process. That planet will also gravitationally attract all the gas in that region of the debris disk, which will become the planet's atmosphere. If the planet's large enough to hold onto that gas in the glare of the sun, or far enough away from the star that the solar wind is too weak to strip the planet of its atmosphere, it will have an atmosphere for millions or billions of years. Or it may have an atmosphere much deeper than its rocky core, making it a gas giant planet like Saturn or Jupiter. All determined by those original collisions of free-floating gas molecules and dust grains long before the Sun even existed. 
and that means that our solar system and the Earth spin counterclockwise. If more molecules and particles in the early star forming nebula smacked into each other the other side and spun everything clockwise, our Sun, the planet's orbits and rotations would all be clockwise and everything would still be fine. The only anomaly in this is the planet Venus. While Venus orbits the Sun in a clockwise direction like all the other planets, Venus rotates backwards to the Sun and all the other known planets, and we don't know why. Well, we think we do because we have some pretty compelling evidence, but we don't want to exhaust ourselves, so we'll probably do another video on that mystery. And if you're watching this in the future, we've already done it and you can find it here. So sorry to say it, but this planet Earth that many of us see as a Garden of Eden is just the leftover detritus from the birth of our Sun. But it evolved birds and trees and all the people you've ever loved. So as shit heaps go, it's not a bad one.